G-E-G-P. What's going down, everybody? Welcome back to the station. Welcome back to the channel. Y'all know it is your boy, Ray G. You can find me on X at Ray GQ. And yes, it's a little late, but it's still Thursday. Trinity Thursdays, man. Trust the Trinity. Triple T, not triple D, triple T. Trust the Trinity. We got the Bears and the Panthers about to pop off tonight right behind me. Bryce Young, it's going to be interesting. We're going to actually talk about DJ Moore and Adam Thielen as I record this video. And it should be posted before halftime, but it will be interesting to see by the time I post this video how those two players are going to perform in the game because they are two players we will talk about for the sake of this exercise today. Appreciate everybody tapping in. If it's your first time diving into Trinity, I'm going to talk about that very briefly, but some of y'all have been here for nine weeks, so you already know what it's about. But make sure you go to DestinationDevy.com. Check out the content over there. I just dropped an article explaining what Trinity score is. Let me share my screen real quick right here. Just dropped on the website yesterday. I don't write a lot of articles, but I will be doing a weekly series on the website. You can sign up over there and um, just subscribe to the channel, right? Hit that thumbs up button, subscribe, like the content, uh, comment below. Let me know what you think about this, but let's dive into it. Trinity takeaways coming out of week nine. And this article really just sort of in a condensed form explains what this is. Long story short, Trinity score is the wide receiver. It's all independent and isolated on the wide receiver. Is the wide receiver doing the types of things in their respective offenses to score us fantasy points, period? That's all it is. What is the wide receiver doing? The routes, the, the average depth of target. Is he getting the air yard share? Yards after the catch, first read target share, target, all kinds of stuff properly weighted, equally distributed into one score, tested, proven, and tried all the way back to 2018. And I like to start these things off and I'll continue to start them off the same way for a little bit until everybody sort of gets the gist of what's going on. But historical averages from 2018 to 2022, remember, in order to be a top 12 wide receiver, according to Trinity score, 8.09 is the threshold. Top six wide receiver, 9.1 is the threshold. Historically, over the last five years, wide receiver twos, 13 through 24, Trinity score of 7.41. And then you see the wide receiver threes on the screen. Or if you're listening, 7.09. So this is how the scores sort of break down. And let's dive into sort of, I'm going to walk you through the entire process, okay? I'm going to walk you through what I do when I get on the tool website. The first thing I try to analyze when JB update the tracker every Tuesday evening. And then we'll talk about four of the players that I mentioned in the article, just kind of diving into why they were mentioned, why we shouldn't panic. But I think as we dive into the tool, you'll start to notice a pattern. And then we'll talk about the very important context that is required in order to really use this and take your dynasty or seasonal fantasy football game to the next level. So let's pull it back up. Let's dive into the tracker. Get that article out of here. Uh, we don't need to see you anymore. Where you at, baby? Where you at? Where you at? Trinity tracker. Here we go. So this is the first tab on the Trinity tacker, tracker. It is just historical data, 2018 to 2022, and it's Trinity score versus next season's fantasy production. So you can look at this and check out what a player did in year in 2022 from a Trinity perspective and how they scored in 2023. But take that back a year because 23 isn't over, but that's not where I start my Trinity tracker process. I always start off just looking at Trinity score versus points per game just to get a little snapshot of some of the top players versus some of the, the, the lesser producing players. And let me zoom in just a little bit on here. I kind of want to show the whole screen. There we go. All right, you see at the tip top right here, Tyreek Hill, Trinity score damn near perfect, 9.86, and he's given us uh, 25 fantasy points per game. Just insane production that you're getting from Tyreek Hill. You see A.J. Brown, every week he's creeping up closer and closer to Tyreek Hill, and I'll get you to the newly added feature on here. You see the tier threshold, so even if you forget 9.1, 8.09, 7.4, or 7.09. There goes the thresholds based on that historical data, which shows you the ranges in which those wide receivers are producing for you. So yeah, everybody behind this wide receiver line, wide receiver three line that we're arguing over in trades that you don't know what to do about, they're probably closer to the same outside of market value or context, which we'll get to. But the actual like start of Trinity is you go to the Trinity data tab. You go to the Trinity data tab. That is the very... First thing I do every time I go in here, and I'm going to show you why, because I want to look for certain things. What I'm trying to identify and what you should be trying to identify when you use this tool are the receivers who are overproducing, underproducing, see if there's any value to be gained by adding one of the overproducing 
players or one of the underproducing players? Or conversely, are there any overproducers that you're a little concerned about that you may need to move off of or some that are underperforming that you're still in on? Devontae Adams, we shall talk about. But let's pull it back up as the data is done running. Look at that, Adam Thielen right at the top, and there's no... no there's no rhyme or reason why that, that is the case. But you kind of sort by Trinity score, see who's at the top, and look at that dead stone bottom of Trinity in, inside of 2023 season is Quentin Johnson. 1.09, just not good at all. There goes the same things that were displayed on the first screen, the Trinity score versus points per game. You see Tyree Kill at the top, A.J. Brown, Brandon Ayuk are the only three wide receivers right now on a per-game basis that are scoring you a Trinity score of nine or above. Right after that, you got Puka Nakua, Stefan Diggs, Jamar Chase, CeeDee Lamb, Cooper Cup still up there, DeAndre Hopkins, Justin Jefferson, Amon Ross St. Brown, and looky, looky, DJ Moore, 8.47 and is on tap tonight, actually playing right now on the screen behind us. But that's not what's really important. It's right here. It's these two tabs right here. This is where I start my process every single time. Expected points per game and then points per game over expected. Who who is who is overproducing and who is underproducing? That's what I need to see. I need to see where the plus minuses are in this column right here. So when we filter this thing out and reverse engineer it, DJ Moore at the top of this list with a point per game over expected of 5.1. DJ Moore is supposed to only get us about 11.7 points per game based on the offense, based on what they're doing, based on a whole bunch of stuff that PFF factors into this. He should only be getting us close to 12 fantasy points per game, but he's scoring us 16 and a half, which ain't nobody complaining about that. But when you look at Trinity score versus expected points per game, and we will run this real quick, you'll see that uh, old DJ Moore, where is he at? There he is, way down here, far away from that regression line. I'm a little concerned. I'm a little concerned, and it has nothing to do with DJ Moore's dynasty value or nothing with DJ Moore sort of, um, you know, his, his, his long-term value. It's this season. And every week he's been creeping closer and closer to this regression line, which he's currently underneath it from a point per game perspective. So the new feature that we added is the weekly Trinity score. So you got to filter this thing out. You got to go 2023. You got to pick your player. We're going to go DJ Moore. We're going to pull up and see how he's been trending week over week. So we'll calculate that right now, but I'll just tell you what I'm thinking. What I'm thinking is, yeah, there should be some regression for DJ Moore. It, it, with Tyson Bagent, and I don't know if he just caught a pass, but with Tyson Bagent at quarterback and the way the Chicago Bears passing offense has sort of su suffered without Justin Fields and those big play abilities, it's tough to buy into, you know, DJ Moore continuing to score us close to 17 fantasy points per game. And again, this is going to be an interesting exercise because he's still doing the type of things which should yield fantasy points in an offense. So I'm going to pull back up the Trinity, uh, not the Trinity score report, the Trinity data tab, and then we'll take a look at the things that DJ Moore is doing and see if that kind of materializes this evening on the game. All right, so for DJ Moore, let's take a look at his air yard share. So let's go back to DJ Moore. It's at the top of the list at overproducing wide receivers, and he's still got a close to 40% air yard share. This is the problem. 22% target share, yards after the catch per reception, are great. The problem with DJ Moore is he's not commanding an elite level target share. You see the guys who are also overproducing um, right here. Tyreek Hill, AJ Brown. Both of these players are overproducing what they are expected to give you. Tyreek Hill expected fantasy points per game, 20.6, so close to 21 pit fantasy points is giving you 25. AJ Brown, he's giving you 23, about 23 if you round up, and he's supposed to be giving you about 19. So the reason why I'm not as concerned about these players producing overexpected is look at this. Look at the difference here between these three wide receivers. Both of these two, A.J. Brown and Tyreek Hill, over 40% air yard share. Both of these players, Tyreek Hill and A.J. Brown, over a 30%, at minimum 30% target share. And then both of these players, A.J. Brown and Tyreek Hill, are, um, you know, they're fine yards after the catch per reception. They're not, they're not DJ Moore. They're nothing like that, but they're right there. Tyreek Hill, 5.91 yards per catch after the reception, and A.J. Brown, at 4.72. So both of these players, and if you're watching on the screen, let me uh, let me reduce it down a little bit so you can see that. There you go, that, that yak right there. That's the difference. That's the difference. And realistically, these two players, I mean, 0.3 war is insane. You filter that out there right at the top. No, you know, nobody's even close besides Stefan Diggs, who's parentally kind of just underrated, quiet, 
assassin out there for Buffalo, also overproducing. But again, difference, 30% target share, almost 40% air yard share, even though he doesn't do a ton after the catch per reception. So we'll see how DJ Moore performs tonight if he is targeted more. I've got a theory and thought that Darnell Mooney probably isn't too far behind. Uh, Mooney, 21% air yard share, target share 15%. Like, the fact that he's coming on a little bit, pulling a little bit away from DJ Moore is not helping, but we'll see how DJ Moore performs tonight um, in this matchup. But I want to talk about a couple of players that I highlighted in the article. Uh, player number one that I want to go to and talk about is Deontay Johnson. Deontay Johnson from Pittsburgh. This was a cat that a lot of people were, you know, a little bit concerned about because George Pickens was becoming the alpha in that offense. And what we've seen so far is that is not the case. I mean, Deontay Johnson came back. You know, he's given us, he, there's room for growth. He's given us 14.8, 15 fantasy points per game. Should be giving us about one more. You see that plus minus at minus 1.3 1. 1. points per game over expected. So there's still a little bit of room for Deontay Johnson to go up. You look at his air yard share, 37%. Target share right at 24. Need that to be a little better. And then the yak per reception, 4.87. Here's the issue. With Deontay Johnson. The issue is when you use Trinity, this is not going to flat out tell you, okay, filter by expected points and give me all the guys that are negative in that category, right? You do that, you flip that around, give me all the Christian Watsons and Olaves and oh my gosh, Elijah Moore's a buy. He should be giving us, you know, he's expected at 10 and he's giving us way less. He's an auto buy. Give me some of that Elijah Moore. No, 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 no. Context must be applied to all of these things. And with context, I still use other tools. I still continue to use Fantasy Points Data Suite because I love their first read target share metric. It's it's incredible. You look at some of the guys who are at the top of the Trinity. Here's A.J. Brown right here, second in the NFL with 41.6% of Jalen Hurts' first read targets going his way. I mean, this is why Devonta Smith is struggling because A.J. Brown, his first read percentage is damn near 50% of the time Jalen Hurts drops back. It's going to A.J. Brown. You go down the line. Some other names that we talked about earlier, Diggs. There's Tyreek Hill. Look at that, D.J. Moore. So this should give you some encouragement, right? It's not all doom and gloom for Moore. Target share is a little low, but at least he's commanding 35% of that, and I'm pretty sure there's nobody even close to him uh, as far as pulling targets away from him. Let's see if Chicago is there. Chicago. D.J. Moore. There's Komet, 18%. Mooney, 16%. So, yeah, DJ Moore's, shit, trip doubling up Cole Komet, you know, doubling up him. So there's still hope. There's It's not all doom and gloom for DJ Moore, but these are some of the things that you have to take into consideration before you just say buy and or sell. So let's go back to the Trinity Tracker <clears throat> and finish up the thought with Deontay Johnson. And this is one of the coolest new features that we have that JB implemented so we're going to go Deontay Johnson. There we go. Let's let's type him in there. And then we'll also go George Pickens. Let's go George Pickens, these two players, because we want to look at who's the real alpha now, all that stuff. And you filter this thing out for the 23 season. <clears throat> 23 season. There you go. I don't want to filter by week. I want to look at all the weeks. No filter. Uh, all the weeks. We'll go to Trinity versus where are you at? Weekly Trinity score. And Deontay Johnson, George Pickens will run this. And this will allow us to see how these players have performed week after week. You know, to be able to track who's really rising, who's really falling. What are the trends? What's the data telling us? And sort of look at the score week to week and how it's either increasing or decreasing for another player. This is a fantastic addition to the tool and going to be very useful as we track this, especially in seasonal and dynasty leagues. So let's go back to the tool. Bam, here we are. So this is for the 23 season alone. So you see right here, uh, there goes, uh, who's over here? There's George Pickens, week eight. So here we go. At the top of this grid, you got George Pickens. I mean, had a trinity of almost perfect in week two. 9.66 gave us 22 fantasy points above the regression line. Great week from George Pickens. Down here, you got another GP in here. This was the first week that Deontay Johnson came back. He had a great trinity score, didn't score us a lot of fantasy points. But... Outside of that, Deontay Johnson in week nine that we just got out of, 22 points, Trinity score over nine. That is elite stuff right there. Deontay Johnson, the week before that, Trinity of 7.7. .7, so this is telling me they ramped him up again in the following week, and he was right there, 6.5. Here goes George Pickens in week three. Deontay Johnson, week one. There's George Pickens, week four. 
GP week one, George, GP week eight, and GP week nine. This was week nine for George Pickens, and we know he had an awful game. Trinity score of 3.9, gave us one fantasy point, and on the other end of that spectrum, Deontay Johnson had a Trinity of nine. So this is telling me, as the weeks go on, Deontay Johnson is still ramping it up. And even in the week where he did not overtake or leapfrog uh, George Pickens, George Pickens in week seven did technically outproduce him, right? 9.49 Trinity and to Deontay Johnson's 8.15. But look at the points, 15.7. And Johnson was hovering right there at about 13. Both at, Look at where he's at. And then he just continued to go up. As the weeks and the season goes on, it's Deontay Johnson. He's the alpha. This is how you use this thing. And you got to apply some context there. How much belief and faith do you have in Kenny Pickett actually being that guy to support two of these wide receivers week in and week out? That's a tough sell. That's a tough sell. And that Pittsburgh offense that seems to be struggle week in and week out, for me to bet on both of those players, along with the way they want to use their running game, being this major success for us in fantasy football, you got to pick and choose. And if I had to pick one from that Pittsburgh offense, there's no doubt about it. Wouldn't be George Pickens. Give me Deontay Johnson. And that's how you walk through that with Deontay Johnson. But let's go to a player whose quarterback has returned, a player who was an early adopter in the Trinity series. And I'm talking about Arizona Cardinals wide receiver, Marquise Hollywood Brown. Here we go, Hollywood, Hollywood. He's been maintaining Holding on strong with uh, Clayton Toon and uh, Joshua Dobbs when he was still there. Right there, Trinity score of 6.83, giving us about 12 and a half fantasy points per game. And a very nasty cluster of, you know, the Christian Kirks and Nico Collins, Tank Dell over here, Ridley Flowers. You see this, 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 this tier right here. There goes Adam Thielen overproducing, pulling back to the bone some. But Hollywood Brown below this regression line right now. And this just, I, I'm very... Very bullish on what Hollywood Brown can do with Kyler Murray. So let's pull up his weekly Trinity score and just see, you know, how things... Well, we don't even need to go with the week. We don't even need to go through the weekly stuff for Hollywood Brown. We can just go right here. Trinity score over expected points per game. Calculate that up. We'll find Hollywood and talk through why with the upgrade of Kyler Murray, things should be very bright for not only Hollywood Brown... But Trey McBride, I'm also excited about. And we're testing some tight end Trinity stuff as we speak right now. So check it out. Here he is. And I love how it keeps all the other player names up here. But then I, I spotlights Hollywood Brown. So here he is right there. Trinity in a nice range with Waddle, with Pittman, you know, around this range with uh, Jacoby Myers and T. Higgins. Yet he needs to, he, he's above this regression line, right? Like this is, this is telling me he's expected about 15 points per game. He's got some room to go. He's got some room based on the things that he's doing in his offense outside. He's got room to score more fantasy points. And if he can get to that 50, that's what he's expected to do, right? That is just what he's expected to do. And right now he's giving you about three points less than expected. You're telling me that, that Kyler Murray's back. And I'm not saying he's going to look like the Pro Bowl Kyler immediately. But by the time we need him in the playoffs, that's his number one target. And he's expected 15 is over expected could easily flip flop. And he's given us 16, 17 fantasy points per game. This range of Trinity for Hollywood Brown is very good. Remember that kind of bottom wide receiver tier three wide receiver three tier threshold is about 7.09. So he's not far off of that right now. Hollywood Brown, when I look at where he's current, where he's currently sitting, what he's doing, tell me why in a seasonal league, you wouldn't prefer Based on what they're doing, Hollywood Brown over at Devontae Smith, who's behind him a little bit, right? These are the type of decisions that you have to make and remove the name. This, this score is completely and entirely unbiased at all. It is straight data, numbers, weighted, distributed, based on fantasy success. So don't overthink it. I don't know if that's true. It is true. These are the things that these players are doing in their respective offenses to score fantasy points or not to score fantasy points. All right, let's get busy now. Let's get busy and get through this because I want to talk through quite a few. And I'm going to see if y'all can spot it. So let's do this right now. Let's go. Let's go any players we should buy. So let me scroll. Let me move my head out of the way so y'all can really see what's going down. Matter of fact, I'm going to just get out of here all together. Here we go. Let's just scroll on down and see if there are any outliers and we've got this expected fantasy points actually filter by trinity score filter by trinity and let's work our way back and see who is um a little under expected right so you scroll down 
You see, Brandon Ayuk is uh, scoring us about 15 fantasy points, even though he's uh, giving us supposed to give us about 13. But let's go down and see if there are any player names that stick out immediately for us. And there go a couple right here. All right. So you're talking about players with the Trinity score over eight, but have a negative in what they're actually scoring us. So right here in this pocket, Trinity score over eight. That is a little under what they should be doing. You've got Devontae Adams. Uh, he's scoring us 14, should be giving us close to 17, plus minus of negative 2.8. You also have Deontay Johnson. We talked about him. Highlight Garrett Wilson, another guy. DeAndre Hopkins, Cooper Cup. All these players have high trinities and should be scoring us a lot more than they currently are. But there's an easy sort of, um, there's a common theme with these players. Devontae Adams, quarterback situation. Jimmy Garoppolo, awful. Here's why I'm still not worried about Devontae Adams, y'all. Like, zero, zero Devontae Adams fears at all. I'm watching him play. Doesn't look remotely cooked to me at all. When you look at what he's expected to give us versus what he is, and then you take a look at all the other peripheral metrics, right? Air yard share, 42%. Incredible. Target share, 30%. That's what you want. Yak, that was never really Devontae Adams' game. He's still doing the type of things inside that offense that should yield points. It's just not happening. Let's go over here and take a look at, I had to go check some prop bets, man. I had Giannis over 27 and a half points, but let's go over here and look at the first three targets here. I love this. Who is the quarterback looking at when they throw the ball? Devontae Adams. That's the guy. Now we've got Aiden O'Connell in. How is he going to react and treat Devontae Adams? I still believe that he's going to be looking for Devontae Adams Early and often, I'm not worried about him. I'm just not. I'm trusting what's going on, the things that he's doing in order to score his points. Not worried about Devontae Adams one bit. You see Garrett Wilson at the top of this list. Week one of the Trinity, I had put my name out there that Garrett Wilson was going to propel and climb into elite category, elite territory for a wide receiver position. And four plays into it, that prediction was ruined. But you look at what's happening right now. Alan Lazard is a bum. They have nobody else. Tyler Conklin's fine, but he's not hes not the type of tight end that NFL defensive coordinators are sleeping and dream, or are staying up at night dreaming how to stop Tyler Conklin. Garrett Wilson leading the NFL, 43% first read target share for Garrett Wilson. We come back over to the Trinity. I bet you he's above eight. I mean, yeah, we kind of saw that, right? Let's go to Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson, 8.45. I mean, what this is telling me is he's doing all this stuff that should yield a top 12 wide receiver point per game wise. He's expected 17 and a half and he's given us 14 points per game. Like, and it's off a of sheer volume. Air yard share, 45%. I don't know if that's the highest. It's right there behind Brandon Ayuk. Target share, 30%. Yak, 3.59. If I can get him, I am. If I can buy Garrett Wilson, sign me up because this young man in year two is already doing stuff that, you know, this is what you want to see out of your elite wide receiver veterans, let alone a second-year rookie. Now, here's why you have to be a little hesitant and, and cautious for this season is we know who the quarterback is. So despite the shares, the context is they're probably not quality. They're probably not very good. So this tells part of the story. It's saying that he is being utilized in that offense to be an elite difference maker. Just not happening. And another another prime example is, is DeAndre Hopkins. DeAndre Hopkins is another one. He is underproducing a little bit. He is underproducing a tad bit. But again, DeAndre Hopkins is, is playing with a rookie quarterback who had to play his first NFL game, and then he had the second NFL game was on a short week. So when you're looking at DeAndre Hopkins and his trinity of 8.7 is closer to elite top six category based on the things he's doing, no target competition. I mean, you look at that. 27.5%, 40-yard, 40% air yard share, and doing about the same after the catch per reception as Garrett Wilson. But the context here, y'all, is he's got Will Levis. And this ain't no Will Levis hate, but it's Will Levis reality that he's a rookie quarterback. So I, I'm just, I'm not expecting a lot from, from DeAndre Hopkins to improve his actual point per game output unless he just goes on a crazy touchdown streak. It just looks like he's kind of where he's at. So where he looked like a buy way early in the season, and I still kind of agree with that, um, right now wouldn't be as inclined to trade for DeAndre Hopkins. But if you have faith and conviction that Will Levis is going to be the type of quarterback to take his game to the next level, then Trinity is telling you, 
Go ahead and rock with that because he's doing everything to score fantasy points. So there's no problem about that. Let's go let's filter this way. Let's get Garrett Wilson off there. Deontay, uh, Deontay uh, Johnson, we don't need to talk about him. But let's start looking in here in this range. Overexpected. This is why even though you see this number, oh, my God, he's giving us three and a half points less than what he should. Look at Elijah Moore's Trinity, 3.7. I mean, that's putrid, y'all. That, 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 no. No, no, no. Don't want him. Don't want him. Don't want any Elijah Moore. He's actually he's not helping you win anything. Negative .07 war per game. He's got a 19% target share. No yak. And his air yard share is, is not what you want. It's just not what you want from Elijah Moore. Now, T. Higgins, bounce back week, and he said it, man. I needed that. I needed that. T. Higgins, Trinity moving up. Moving up, only giving us 10 points, expected about 13, minus 3.1 over expected. He hits that and maybe gives us a little bit more, potentially, but now he's banged up with a hamstring. So, damn, T. Higgins. Air yard shares, 35.7%. That's really good. Still problematic. 19% target share. Like, come on, T. Come on, Joe. Give him the ball a little bit more. You, you, you know, you look at these, you look at the players. You just filter by target share alone. And the 30s, I don't even have to look at the name. I could, I could hide the name and everybody with this high target share. These, these are the guys you want. You need to be targeted, right? We flip this thing around. Yeah, I don't really care about uh, Justin Watson or Sky Moore or Van Jefferson or Braxton Berrios. Like, they have no targets. Like, there's no point. There's absolutely no point to even want any of those guys. So outside of best ball formats and you're hoping for a touchdown. Um, but yeah, that's, you can't just look at expected or over expected and say, I'm going to buy, or I'm going to sell same way. You can't just auto fade DJ Morris is still a damn good player. And if he continues to get those targets up, Bajan targets him, fields comes back. DJ Moore right now could be a nice little buy. I mean, you can't buy him cause he's playing right now, but depending on the outcome of this game, Corlin Sutton. All right. So th this is probably, in my opinion, the best use of this tab is when you filter from high to low, you see the DJ Moores, Tyreek Hills, AJ Browns. That's no problem. Justin Jefferson, you're overproducing. I don't care. You're great. You know why I don't care? Because they all have freaking 30% target shares or 40% air yard shares. Cortland Sutton. This is the, the, these two names right here. Cortland Sutton and Jordan Addison kind of stick out like a sore thumb. And why do they stick out like a sore thumb? Eight, nine, nine, eight, five, five, eight, seven, even the six in there, seven. Four, stick out like a sore thumb. We'll talk about Rashid Shahid. Diggs, cool, cool. 4.99, highlight him. Seven, eight, nine, six, 5.5, 5. 4.3. We don't even really need to talk about it. We won't go down any further, right? Rashid Rice, 4.2. Nick Westbrook, Akine. All right, we got enough. We've got enough spotlighted to talk about Cortland Sutton, Jordan Addison, and company. And we'll do this really quickly. Like... Love, let me not even say like, love me some Jordan Addison. think Jordan Addison is an awesome player, and I'm a USC homer. But he's producing 3.2 points more than probably what he should. Josh Dobbs is in, and Josh Dobbs is going to run the ball. Josh Dobbs likes to run the ball, and he's good at that. Jordan Addison is being talked about as like, this is a locked and loaded, you know, you're plugging him in your wide receiver two spot every week just because Jefferson is out. We'll see. What this is kind of telling me, just looking at what's happening with Jordan Addison, air yard share, sub 30%, not ideal. Target share, even lower, right? Sub 20 is just awful. Sub 15 is terrible. Sub 20 is not ideal. And then Yak, he's not a big Yak guy. He's not a big Yak guy. So let me, before we make some conclusions, let's just look for Addison, see where he's at. And his tar first read target share is going to be a little skewed because the time wasn't there, Justin Jefferson. But let's just let's filter this out. And this is the cool thing about Fantasy Points Data Suite. We can literally filter out by the past couple of weeks. So let's just get all of this off of there. Let's go by week, uh, what, six? How long has Jefferson been out? I don't know. Weeks five through nine. Let's just look at those weeks right there. Five through nine. We'll apply that and update it for us. And we'll see with the past couple of months, like where's he been? Okay, 23% first read target share uh, for Jordan Addison, a little bit better, right? A little bit better for, for Addison in that category over the past couple of weeks. And if you look at over the, those same weeks, the target share didn't even go up that much more, right? It's still at 20% target share, which is, in my opinion, like the bare minimum threshold that it needs to be, right? The bare minimum threshold that your target share needs to be in order to be like a consistent, reliable asset We'll see. 
this is one where I'm just a little bit cautious on Addison and plugging him in as a lot. And you've got to start him, right? You're going to start him because he's that he's that deem number one. There's no there's no KJ Osborne this week with the concussion. But just be mindful of that. Be mindful of Addison. The Corlin Sutton scares the hell out of me. I mean, 5.26, that is very scary. Uh, air yard share solid for Sutton. Nothing after the catch per reception and about roughly the same target share on the season, about 19% for Cortland Sutton. So, again, supposed to be giving us 10. He's giving us 13. Might be some pullback for Cortland Sutton. Rashid Shahid, another poor Trinity score. Uh, target share, 12%. Get out of here. Yak, really good. Overall target, air yard share. You, you would think Rashid Shahid should be even higher than this, but he's not. So, uh, this is one. Supposed to be giving us eight. He's giving you 12. You can sell him, put him in a package. Goodbye, Rashid Shahid. Noah Brown is an interesting one. Noah Brown, let's get Shahid off of here. I want to highlight, there goes all his running mates right there. Let's just get all the Houston Texans. But matter of fact, let's just do this. Houston Texans, let's look at all of the Texans. And we'll filter him by Trinity. Who's doing the most in this offense? No doubt it's uh, it's Nico Collins, right? Nico Collins has been there. He's doing things. Scoring us the most fantasy points. Even though it's a little overexpected, as is Tank Dell, as is Noah Brown, the only one underproducing is damn Robert Woods. And he's 35 years old, 40 years old. Give uh, Robert Woods a uh, Superman Robert Woods. That was his nickname at USC. A little bit of grace right here. He's an old guy. But you look at Brown, Dell, and Nico Collins. Now, this is going to be an interesting one, and we'll actually pull up the weekly trinity for these three players in a second. But as I look at these three guys, and the snapshot, and where I would be willing to invest uh, any kind of capital or money. Noah Brown is only as good as the points that he's scoring you. There's nobody in your league that's really going to want Noah Brown. You see his KTC value is low, 1500 Not as low as Robert Woods, but not high at all. It's not really helping you win weeks just yet on this season, but this should change moving forward. Air yard share, not very good on the season. Target share, but we know he's missed time. Tank Dell. This is one where, you know, a lot of people were very concerned about his profile coming out because of the size. He's separating. He's winning. And he's slowly but surely, even with a game miss, climbing on Nico Collins with his target share. And this is actually for the games played. So this is PFF's, um, PFF's formula. Every every site you use might be a little different. You look at Fantasy Life, that da Data Sweep player profile, or this, all a little bit different, but roughly around the same. Uh, look at the yak for Nico Collins. Noah Brown, we know the big blow-up game. Here's why I'm not as concerned about the Houston Texans is their quarterback situation. They got a freaking Mack truck, an 18-wheeler. You know when I talk about trailer or truck, which quarterback is the truck, which is the trailer with C.J. Stroud? Uh, I mean, he is an armored truck. So his ability to help some of these wide receivers overproduce, I got full confidence that over the course of the season and moving forward, he'll continue to do that for these players. So my takeaway when I look at this is, can I get Noah Brown for cheap as a throw-in? If I'm a contender, can I get him put into a deal as an absolute throw-in? Because the chances are he's going to continue to produce for you in that flex back-end wide receiver role with touchdown upside because they're going to let C.J. Stroud sling it around day and night. Tank Dell, probably too much value. Him and Nico Collins right there to really send offers for. I don't know how people feel about him because of the size, uh, but I like where his trinity is heading. So... I'm kind of in on Tank Dell uh, of trying to send something out there, seeing if I can single-handedly acquire him. Nico Collins would be the one if I had to pick one to buy, sell, cut, keep, trade, cut. I would probably trade Nico Collins, uh, keep Tank Dell, cut Noah Brown. But if I were like acquire, buy, or something like that, give me Noah Brown at cost, especially in best ball formats. And then I would take the ascension of uh, Tank Dell. And what I kind of want to see all is is those three players run against one another weekly. And we'll pull, we'll pull that up in a second. We'll pull that up in a second. There was another team that I want to talk about. We were talking about Hollywood Brown, Arizona Cardinals. Uh, who else did we have spotlight? Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua both suffering in L.A. right now. Um, but both of these players, I mean, this is why you just got to keep betting on the Los Angeles Rams and not the, not the Chargers, not Quentin Johnson. You got to just keep betting on Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup. I mean, air yard share, 38% to 31%. Both these guys, 30% target share. Both these guys over five yards after the catch per reception. Just freaking ridiculous for both of those wide receivers. So, and both of them, I mean, 
Puka Naku is coming back down to reality, right? His expected, he's overproducing by half a point. Cooper Cup underproducing. So what this is telling me is Puka Nakua's loss of, of Matthew Stafford pulling him down closer to the, the, the mean, and Cooper Cup not having Matthew Stafford is dropping him below. So Puka Nakua coming down to the median, Cooper Cup falling below. Once you get Matthew Stafford in there, I bet you those things reverse and flip-flop for both of those players. So again, two elite Trinity scores. Not concerned. I'm not concerned. They're doing this stuff to score fantasy points, and I'm going to trust that more than trying to chase a falling knife in fantasy football. Who else did we have spotlight that we wanted to kind of talk about? Chris Olave. Let's pull up the Saints. Pull up the New Orleans Saints and talk about old Chris Olave real quick. And this is a guy who's been on the Trinity radar since week one. Expected 17, giving us 13. Shahid overproducing. Michael Thomas underproducing. So, just tell me that these two are the ones you want out of this offense. I know Shahid's got a higher trinity than Michael Thomas, which means he's doing a little bit more. You look at the target share, 22% for Thomas, 24% for Shahid. I mean, air yard share. We know MT ain't no downfield threat. So, like, that being as close as it is is surprising to me. Chris Olave still dominating. I mean, goodness, 7.5. Come on, Derek Carr, just feed him a little bit. Target share. This is why you still like you still bet on Michael Thomas over Rashid Shahid. 18%, which is not good, but it's a lot better than 12%. 25 for Chris Olave. It's good. It's good. Yak, 3.8. Shahid, more speed, all that other good stuff. Give me Olave. I don't really want Thomas. This, like, if I had to pick between the two, I would take Michael Thomas in a seasonal format. Hell, I'd probably take him regardless. Like Rashid Shahid has no dynasty value. I mean, he's right there, 2,800. MT at 2015. So there's not even there's not even a big gap in value between those two. Give me the guy that's commanded the targets, that's doing the things that earn the targets, and I'll just let it play out how it is. The last kind of player that I want to talk about, let's do this. Filter by Trinity. Get out of here. Get out of here. Let's scroll down and see if there are any additional outliers that need to be discussed. There's Jalen Waddle down there at the bottom. Who's that? Mike Williams. Let's go page two. See, we've got Devontae Smith. That's what I want to talk about. Devontae Smith and Zay Flowers, actually. Devontae Smith and Zay Flowers. So let's go Philadelphia. Let's go Philadelphia Eagles. A lot of people still valuing Devontae Smith and pricing them two first-round picks in order to acquire your Devontae Smith. And he's probably a lot better than what's happening right now. But for some reason, with this change in offensive offensive scheme, like he's seen a lot of, a lot of stuff decrease. Devontae Smith was a 26 27% target share guy last year. He's down to 19%. You know, 20%, essentially. He's, he's down to 20%. Doesn't do a lot after the catch per reception. He's not getting over a 30% air yard share on the season. I, I mean, 5.57 Trinity is... That's just right there at, you know... That, that's fine. That's you're, you're okay. You're passable right there. He's giving us 13 fantasy points per game, and he's expected at 11. Right? He, he, he's overproducing by two but not really doing the things inside the offense to make that happen as evidenced by this, which leads me to believe that ideally, like he's got a regression candidate down, like negative regression for Devonta Smith. But we know context that Dallas Goddard is out. He's out for four weeks. And I don't believe they're going to throw the ball and launch it to Albert O or Jack Stoll or Grant Calcaterra, who's still dealing with some concussions, I believe. So you could say that he may see some, by necessity, some positive regression just based on the fact that Dallas Goddard is not in the offense. But this is one where, historically, Smitty under Shane Steichen, much better than this, much better than this. But what we're getting right now, you know, is um, it's a little concerning for, for Devonta Smith, a little concerning. And we can go to Trinity and, and look at the weekly Trinity score for for Smith, but I really wanted to, to touch on who was the players that I want to see that were moving up. Well, let's look at Zay real quick, and this is the last one. We'll go Baltimore, Zay Flowers. Yep, wanted to talk about Baltimore and Zay Flowers. Zay Flowers still leads his team in target share, 24%. Yak, number one on the team. Air yard share, 24%. Trinity scores 6.3. It's giving us 11, expected 12, plus minus, minus 1.3. Good KTC value. I know a lot of people are disappointed with what you're getting out of Zay Flowers from a from a points perspective. I would caution you to give up hope too early 
because he's still doing the things by a nice margin. I mean, there's no receiver on his team earning over 16% target share. There's no other receiver on his team, you know, within three three percentage points in his air yard share. And there's no other receiver in his team, I guess, Nelson Aguilar, you know, averaging over three yards of catch, uh, three yards of yak every time he catches the ball. Context here is it's probably a lower volume pass attack. And let's just go over here and take a look at uh, first read target share for Zay Flowers and where he ranks. You see the elite guys, 30%. Where's all Zay? Let's try to just find him without, without filtering because I just want to see how low he is. I want to really feel that Zay Flowers fall, man. And it, it, it feels, let's see. All right, there he is right there, 48. So he's a 21%. You know, is that the end-all, be-all, the first read target share? No, it's not end-all, be-all. You can look at end zone targets. You can look at missed tackles force. You can look at QB efficiency. We know he's got a good quarterback, but it looks like when Baltimore's dropping back, and now that we know where he's at, let's just filter this thing out by the Ravens. Let's just look. Ravens. Mark Andrews, 25%. Zay Flowers, 21%. OBJ, 19%. So you got three players within six percentage points of Lamar Jackson zeroing in on, which tells me that they're all probably... Uh, what's Mark Andrews giving us fantasy points per game? Uh, expected for Andrews that he's giving us 15.3 fantasy points per game. So, I mean, it's kind of like his, his, his distribution, right, is, is sort of like screwing over all of them. Just a, just a tad bit, right? And now that we've got the tight ends in here, you can kind of look at the target share. I mean, look, this right here is like it's Washington commander land. And we talk about not liking having, you know, all these players within a couple of percentage points of one another in target share. But that's the, cons the, the lack of consolidated targets really hurts all of these guys. Like Andrew should probably be doing even more than he is. Uh, and you look at a team like the Rams. And it is consolidated. It's two guys. It's and this is the last you know, month of the season, but it's two guys in 29%. It's Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup. Nobody else. Nobody else. And that's what you want to see. You go to the Dallas Cowboys. Dallas Cowboys, look at this. Over the last, you know, four weeks, 31%. And um, nobody else on Dallas. They got Dallas Goddard here, but nobody else on the Cowboys, even over 16%. This is, this is how you identify, you know, when you're like, all right, all right, that target, that's the guy. Now, what else are you doing? Then you go to that first read target share and see uh, what Dak Prescott is doing. Bam. Every damn time he drops back, 36% of the time he's throwing a CD Lamb. Next up, Michael Gallup, which is surprising, at 17%. So, you know, you got you to gotta factor in some, some other things. But when you're utilizing this, like this is the start. This still tells me Zay Flowers is doing the stuff, right? Air yards, targets, yak, that should warrant some more fantasy points and it should the, the data tells you right here should be getting us close to 12 and how's that game change and is that something that's gonna gonna change your life in fantasy football absolutely not like i'm not not trying to say that at all but it is something to sort of pay attention to uh moving forward so a uh, weekly trinity score versus points per game pretty cool feature right here uh, who do we want to look at who would be a good example of uh aj brown is actually a great example so we'll go aj brown and Tyreek Hill, because this is one where if you use the tracker, you, you could see this sort of trend happening. Oh, I don't want Trinity data. You could see this trend happening week over week that A.J. Brown was getting closer and inching his way closer and closer to Tyreek Hill. But now we've included this to where you can actually see it. And we'll wrap up with this one right here. So you can kind of see right here on the weekly tracker and you see the dark green is A.J. Brown and the light you know, teal or aqua green is Tyreek Hill. But look at how close these guys have been fighting all season. And it was very interesting to see A.J. Brown kind of flirting around. That's week six, week five, right there, right on that regression line. Week six, pulling back a little bit. But then you look, week uh, week one, there's A.J. Brown. Week three, this past week, week nine, blow up game, week eight. There's another one, week four, and then Tyreek Hill, week one, 40 points, week five, week three. But week six, look at him. Week seven, he's actually, so all of these Tyreek Hill dots, that's week six, week five, week three, and week four, or week one. So one, three, five, and four, six for Tyreek Hill. Over the past couple of games, there's week seven, 
Trinity dropped down, still giving us 25 points. We know they're scoring a lot, so this is this is not a matter of them scoring points or not. But you see that Trinity pulling back week seven, week eight, week nine. I mean, that's three straight weeks where Tyreek Hill took a dip. Now, is that Tyreek Hill's fault or is that Tua's fault? You know, go dive into the data to figure that out. That's week two, and then that's week four. Whereas A.J. Brown, you look at what he's done over the past couple of games. Look at this, week seven, week eight, week four, week nine. A.J. Brown trending up. Tyreek Hill pulling back a little bit. A.J. Brown trending up a little bit. So this is a pretty cool thing that you can do with the weekly tab now. And if you just wanted to look at it at an individual week, where were these guys at in week eight on the season? If you want to go back to 2019, you want to go back to 2018, you can do that as well. Filter by weekly to just kind of track where these guys are going week in and week out, how they're performing, what they're doing. And there you go. Week eight, Trinity. It goes Tyreek Hill, 8.27. He gave you 25.2 points per game. Now, I mean, look at this. All right. Trinity was uh was a little bit lower, but man, overexpected, just smashed that week. And when you continue to do the things in your offense to earn you fantasy scoring opportunities, good things normally tend to follow at this position. It's easy. Trinity makes this stuff easy. Now, the application, how you apply it, the additional analysis with quarterback, with offensive scheme, you want to bet on Antonio Pierce and that offense, or do you want to bet on Sean McVay making it happen with Brett Rippey? And that's, that is something, a decision that you have to make. But the data and the receivers who are doing the things that help you score fantasy points, right here in the tracker. So, stuck around to the end of the video. Hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, like the content. 46 minutes strong. Talking Trinity on a Thursday. Track the Trinity over on DestinationDevy.com. Sign up today. Nine bucks a month. Well, ten dollars a month, nine ninety nine. Get you access to the website, premium articles, all types of dope stuff that we're doing over there. Use the War Machine Trinity Tracker seasonal comparison tool, NCAA prospect tools. We're building things that help you be better in fantasy football. Appreciate y'all for another Thursday. Enjoy the rest of this game. I'll see y'all bright and early on Wake Up tomorrow morning with me and Jay Rich. I'm out of this name. Peace.